Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Joseph Parker's comeback fight after his loss to Dillian White in July will be held in Christchurch, New Zealand on December 15th. So I'll get straight into portions of the press release followed by a few thoughts. So the press release starts. Joseph Parker's quest to return to the top table of world heavyweight boxing will begin at Christchurch's Horncastle Arena on Saturday, December 15. The former WBO heavyweight champion of the world will headline a Southern Showdown fight night featuring many of New Zealand's and Canterbury's finest professional fighters. Trainer Kevin Barry says after a five-year undefeated run that took Joseph all the way to winning the WBO world title, we now find ourselves in very unusual territory, coming off back-to-back -back losses. Joe has never been in this position before and needs a top performance. Parker's opponent for his first fight on New Zealand soil in 18 months will be confirmed in the coming weeks. Parker says, whoever they put in front of me, I need to get the job done and get it done well. Having experienced what it's like to reach the pinnacle of the sport and then come back down again after a couple of tough defeats, I'm more motivated than ever to get back to the top. Coming off a points decision loss to Anthony Joshua in a blockbuster heavyweight title unification bout in Cardiff, Parker suffered a tough luck defeat in a short notice fight at the hands of Dillian White at London's The O2 in July. Parker somehow recovered after being floored by a sickening head clash in the second round to come within seconds of stopping White with a furious late round comeback that ended with the British slugger clinging on after being knocked down by a thunderous right hand in the 12th round. Parker says, I could have and should have won that fight, but that's boxing. It's now time to get back to work. I can't wait to fight again in Christchurch. I've got really good memories from my last time there, which was a fourth round KO of Solomon Hamono in 2016. It's a great homecoming for me. New Zealand's next best heavyweight prospect, the undefeated junior FAR, will contest the main undercard bout. The 15-0 FAR captured the WBO Oriental heavyweight title, a belt previously held and defended nine times by Parker in his last outing against Mexican heavyweight champion Luis Pascual. That's junior FAR who beat Pascual. The action-packed card will also feature Canterbury star Bowen Morgan, who I would note was involved in a really fun fight on Junior Farr's last televised card in June. Tuko Events director David Higgins says he was thrilled to be taking a world-class boxing promotion back to Christchurch. We had plenty of options for Joseph's return fight after a couple of tough but highly credible losses. But Christchurch was a clear front-runner from very early on. We've got great partners in the city. It's thanks to the unwavering support of Joseph that we're able to bring what will be a fantastic event to the city. Christchurch NZ General Manager of Destination and Attraction, Lauren Heafy, says our city is primed to pack a punch in support of Parker as he fights to win back his World Boxing Championship. The sport of boxing is all about heart, determination and will, which resonates perfectly with Christchurch's spirit of exploration. He says Christchurch visitors and residents are spoiled for choice. Oh no, I won't get into that. Kevin Barry, who is also from Christchurch originally, also says it's great to be fighting again in Christchurch, the city where it all began for me. Christchurch has a very proud history in boxing and has always given a lot of love and support to Joseph on his professional journey. And that was Duco Events press release, well about 70% of it or so. Okay, so we have a date confirmed for Joseph Parker, December 15th in Christchurch, New Zealand, but no opponent. And that's not hugely unusual for Duco events. They have announced fights before where the date has been locked in and then an opponent has been named in the you know coming week or coming weeks. Uh, but what this does allow is for Parker to get back to training camp, get into camp with Kevin Barry in Las Vegas, and get cracking into um, basically his preparations for December 15th. And you'd have to imagine with this date confirmed that negotiations with any fighter or fighters would be you know, sufficiently well advanced, so they can't just be started, starting from scratch. They will have a number of guys that they have been working on, and potentially one or two that are very close to signing for this fight. 
There has been a bit of speculation that potentially it could be Lucas Brown just on the strength of some of this post from his social media. Fight pending um, and be basically be able to tell you all soon. Um, just waiting for contracts, etc. Just making sure things are settled down. Um, but keeping busy for the rest of the year, which is great. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I've got a Thailand camp coming up uh, 30th of October to the 9th of November. So that's also exciting. Okay, it would be easy to, on the strength of that, to go, it's probably Lucas Brown, but, you know, it's hard to say because Brown does have some options. He's been talking about fights in the UK with potentially Dave Allen, a few other names he's thrown out. He's talked about potentially fighting in Europe, and also he's called out recently Adam Kanowski. So just because Lucas Brown is getting back into a training camp, he'll be heading over to Thailand doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be him but if it is Lucas Brown then it is a good trans-Tasman clash Brown and Parker a little bit of a history here Lucas Brown when he held the WBA regular strap basically blew off Parker and said well you need to go fight some guys and work your way up just like I have and then obviously when Parker won the strap and Lucas Brown was uh, down and out after his uh, sort of peds related stuff he was sort of begging Parker for a fight so it's sort of that situation had flipped the script and he was asking Parker for a fight. And it almost did actually happen. Late 2017, there was a contract that was drawn up. Parker could have signed it, but he was negotiating with Anthony Joshua at the same time. So they almost made that fight. But one thing that makes me think it's not Lucas Brown is the Horncastle Arena. It's um, a decent sized venue, but if they were going to do a Lucas Brown fight, I would have thought potentially it would have been a bigger venue. So the Horncastle Arena is a good venue, but I just wonder, because they did hold the Solomon Hamono fight there in 2016, is it actually going to be someone more of that ilk in terms of the level? I guess a lot of people would argue potentially Lucas Brown has devolved to that level where he's a high-level journeyman or a gatekeeper now. But it could potentially be someone on the Solomon Homono level. They're saying that Parker needs to look good. This is what Kevin Barry is saying. He needs to have a good performance. And really, he does need to have a good performance. He's got to build some confidence back up. One, for himself, he needs a knockout. He hasn't had a knockout in just over two years. And he also needs to um, give some confidence back to his fan base because I think there has been a bit of eroding of his support, even in New Zealand. There's not as many people talking about Joseph Parker now. I don't think there's as many people looking for him. And some of that has come from the performance. But this is that situation where Joseph Parker had a massive casual following, especially in New Zealand. New Zealanders love a winner. But as soon as he started losing... It sort of just sort of started to erode a bit. So I think he needs to get a knockout. He needs to look good, take care of business. And then, you know, that is going to help, you know, inflate some of the support back up or at least the confidence in him that he's still got something to give. But in terms of the rest of the card, so we have Junior Far on the undercard. And you know why they're doing this? Because eventually they want to build towards a Joseph Parker and junior far fight not now but maybe in two or three years time so junior far 15 and 0 right now his most recent fight was against luis pasquale junior far has had a few issues recently health wise he's had a few issues training wise or this is what has been reported and stuff that he's been saying uh, a few injuries and other bits and pieces and it's resulted in a little bit of a sort of drop in his profile. People after his recent performances, especially against Luis Pasquale, were going, OK, Junior Farm, I'm not really sure what this guy's about because he didn't impress against a Mexican who showed very little on June the 22nd. But, you know, he, he won that fight, won it relatively comfortable, but he didn't look impressive. Given where he's come from and that they want to sell Junior Farr, you would think it would also be someone who is, you know, the record may look good, but he should be able to take care of them and get a knockout. It's a, a bit of a showcase in terms of, you know, for far at least, because there's going to be more eyes on this event. He's a potential opponent for Joseph Parker in the future. They need to expose him and sell him more to the New Zealand market. Because right now, uh, Junior Far, his profile is relatively low in New Zealand. If you were to ask uh, people on the street, who Joseph Parker is, everyone would know. If you asked who Junior Farr is, you know, you might get one in ten, if you're lucky. 
Um, some of that, I think, comes down to the media strategy involved with him. But uh, part of it is he hasn't had that sort of hype machine behind him. Some of the results haven't been maybe as eye-catching as Joseph Parker on his come up. But he did get quite a bit of exposure versus Fred Latham at the end of last year. But the uh, air has sort of gone out of the balloon after the Craig Lewis performance, which he looked a little, little one-dimensional, and then Luis Pasquale more laterally. But some of that has been health issues, but also the performance hasn't been quite there either. So it'll be interesting to see a junior far on this undercard. And there's a number of other local fighters, including Bowen Morgan, who will be on the card. So it is a case, this is going to be a pay-per-view of some sort. It does seem that they're going to be stacking the undercard, as it were, or at least for a Duco show, because some of the undercards have been terrible in the past. But having Junior Far on the undercard, Bowen Morgan, there's a few other top New Zealand fighters, it seems a bit better than some of the undercards we've had before, which have had pretty cringeworthy corporate fights and such on it. But, you know, that was then, this is now, so if they are going to stack the card... It can probably justify a cost of $29.95 or $39.95, although I think there will be a number of people who still won't like that. But Joseph Parker confirmed for December 15th, opponent to be named in the coming weeks. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.